Hi, David here. Avid Monroe Walker in Scotland with a modest 30 Monroes to my name. Although the last one was nearly two years ago now. The moustache is gone, by the way. Anyway, me and four good friends decided what better way to get back into walking than to fly to Northern Italy and hike the Dolomites. Hold on, stop the music. Before we get to the Dolomites, we'll wind it back a bit first. I like filmmaking, I like telling stories, and recently it dawned on me that I actually do neither of those things. I bought a new drone a year ago and I haven't used it once. Family and friends, they have this joke that I change hobbies every six months whether it's hill walking, filmmaking, or something else. And I guess that's kind of true. No real conviction, I suppose. And going on this trip felt like a good opportunity to try and resurrect a hobby of mine. Why the hell not? You don't get better if you don't practice. And action. Okay, so we left Aberdeen at 3 a.m., traveled to Glasgow, flew to Salzburg, Got the train south towards Italy um, to a place called Dobiaco Tobla, where we began our journey. And by the way, these are my friends who definitely won't thank me for the following videos. But we have Callum, Batman, Neil, and a very sleepy John. And I'll let the film and the vlogging take over from here. Morning time in Tobla. Oh. It's uh, like half past seven in the morning, and we're going to go get some breakfast and then get the bus to Cortina d'Ampezzo at the start of our Dolomites adventures. And after a scenic hour long bus journey, we'd made it. We have touched down in Cortina. It's lovely, it's looking real lovely. We arrived in Cortina at around 10 a.m. and found out our hire car wouldn't actually be available until 3 p.m. I was so stressed out by this, I didn't really document anything worthwhile. Our grand day one plans were in tatters. Quite funny in hindsight. After wandering around for half an hour brainstorming ideas, we were able to leave our extra bags with the car rental company and found a trail that started locally. The perks of being up in the mountains already, I guess. Crossing the bridge. All these are all live tracking me by the Oh, you're good at supping. We're uh, starting the trip off with a Eight kilometre hike up Mont F Monte Faloria. <laughs> the trail begins in the centre of Cortina and goes through the town, into the woods, and to the base of Monte Faloria. Pretty steep incline so far. Mostly just a forest trail. Nothing too exciting. A good test of the legs to get us going. The route is perfect for beginners, has a fairly steep incline that leads to incredible views of the town and surroundings. Our plan was to complete the loop and then take the cable car to the top of the mountain for some bonus views and a spot of lunch. I'm packing a two litre bottle of H2O because I know some people at home are worried about my lack of water consumption. You haven't drink enough water since day? No, I drink plenty, but still worry. Mm. Fizzy cola bottle. Good sugar. Gosh, you are soaking in sweat. It's like you're wearing a dark vest. <laughs> it's okay, I'm past. I'll cut you out.
can't really see it, but that little green thing, that's the, the church in Cortina that we, we've come from. And the, uh, the view from here, tutto bene. We've completed the route from Mount Faloria and we're going to get a cable car to there. And they're scared. I'm not scared. a puzzle chair sponsored by coca-cola connect seamlessly into the rest of the coca-cola puzzle i bet you think it's firm ample squidge a six out of ten for squidge we left the refugio after lunch and when we tried to get the cable car back down the mountain it turned out we'd been sold single journey tickets instead of return journeys a communication error that resulted in having to spend an extra 90 euros to get back down, not our finest hour. When we got back to Cortina, we picked up the hire car and settled in at our base for the next five nights. Day one's hike wasn't exactly what we had in mind, with lakes to see and at least one summit to reach, but we relaxed ahead of our big day tomorrow, hoping that we'd luck out with the weather once again. Guten Morgen. The boys are ready for Lake Sorpis. <laughs> Second day. The weather's looking good. We're actually just walking on a deathly main road because uh, we had to park miles away from the, uh, the starting point because as you would expect it's extremely busy here. But all the boys are ready, got their isotonics, got a nice sandwich and we're ready to get going. I <laughs> Just green screening it. Look, you're green screening it. Oh, nice. We're green screening, brother.
the path we're following is not even that steep so far, but once we get a little bit further up, it'll just go into quite a steep ascent. Um, at the bottom, everyone was going clockwise because it's a two hour hike to the lake. We're going anti clockwise, really steep ascent, and then back down to the lake. So I think it'll take us about, I don't know, maybe five and a half, six hours or something like that. All trails rated this route hard because of two more challenging sections, which I'll show later in the video. And though the route doesn't include a summit, the hike itself is incredible, with plenty of excitement and beautiful scenery to behold. We're approaching our first. Uh, looks kind of a little bit technical, a little bit of scree or something, maybe. Maybe it looks a bit worse than it is from here. It's kind of between these trees and rounding up. Should be fun, should be exciting. This is pretty much what we came for. leaving me in the dust. Oh, it's uh, good and cliffy here. Oh, the turn is disorientating. <laughs> All the boys queuing up for their uh, picture at the so sort of the edge of this, the edge of the cliff. But we made we made it up the uh, up all that stuff, and now ascend to the top of this guy. Plenty of loose rock. Another photo opportunity. Made it up, or just about. last part that we came from, scrambling up that, uh, I don't know, whatever you would call it. Um, so fun, so fun. Uh, that's uh, partly why we chose this one. Just the whole thing, doing it with your friends. It's just so wholesome. Really, really wholesome, really fun, really tiring. Um, and so far the weather's just been excellent. Clouds do look like they're coming in. Right there. There it is, covered by my finger. That's where we're going. All the way around. Well, actually, how the hell do we get up there? Here we go. Oh, oh, I think uh, I'm going to wait for this part. <laughs> oh. 
Oh. Well, that's it. Just don't look down the side, but it was, it was fine. So cool. And it just goes on forever. <laughs> That's one video. Sorry, Callum. There it is. That's where we're going. It's so good. All the way down to the green lake. Oh. I haven't drunk anything. <laughs> no, I, a nice tonic drink. Mm. We are back at the bridge, back at the start. It took us just over six hours up to the top. I suppose it was there, up to the top of that and sort of round. Uh, brilliant, really great. Once we got to the lake, on the way back, that path was crazy busy. You were just stuck behind heaps of people. So many people. But yeah, we were somewhere there and it was absolutely amazing. So good. Well, we knew that today was going to be wet, um, so that's why we haven't gone for a hike. We were just away to go for a little walk into town to buy some vegetables and pasta and stuff for dinner tonight and man it just started dinging down it is uh, it is heavy we accepted that this would be recovery day had lunch in town went back to the apartment to watch some movies and then went to bed hoping but certainly not expecting that tomorrow would be a drier day. Oh wow, it's 6am and I'm really tired. I'm going to start cooking breakfast. I'm going to fill up with fuel, sausages and eggs and Good stuff. Do I have eggs? Two eggs. Do I have bacon? One sausage. And then where's your eggs? In this pan. Okay. We are fed, we are watered, and we are ready to go ish. No one else has actually come outside yet. Um, I think it's going to be terrible rain today. It's extremely cloudy. Um, we'll see how we get on and uh, report soon. <laughs> After yesterday's storm, we didn't have much hope for the weather today either. But with limited time on our hands, we decided we had to get out there and at least try and get that summit cross checked off our list. Getting a bit hot for trousers, <laughs> so the uh, the old sw <laughs> the old switcheroo is taking place. This walk began at the Paso Falzarego near Cortina, technically a circular route that starts and ends at the Baidadone Refugio. The reality is there are plenty of alternative routes to choose from here, and my advice would be to try one of the others, as this one isn't very exciting, 
and we only followed this route as a guide until we had reached Cinque Torre. Raindrops are falling on my head. I'll take a grape one, I like it. Grape one's in fact not olive one, it's grape, but it's got that American grape flavour that you either love it or hate it. This boy's a fan. This guy, not so much. We then switched routes from that point. Our plan was to visit Cinque Torre and the World War I trenches so the walk had some point of interest, just in case the weather didn't clear up. Our main goal, however, was reaching the summit cross of Avro, which is just beyond Cinque Torre. Still extremely foggy, but that's one of the five towers. Let's see if you can see it from here. Good luck. World War One trenches. Oh, World War Two trenches? Uh oh, we'll have to fact check this. Cause no, of the, the world. First World War. First World War, Neil was wrong. Cinque Torre translates to the Five Towers, and even in the fog, it's a truly impressive sight. I can only imagine how cool it would be in better weather. There's a circular route around and through Cinque Torre which you can tie in with the World War I bunkers and if you don't fancy a long hike you can use a cable car which takes you directly up to this point. There's the man. <laughs> There's the man. <laughs> Nearly at uh, Refugio Avaro. Once we uh, get there, I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, somewhere up there, there is a cross and we're going to try and find it. So good luck to us. We'd come all this way. We felt we had to get at least one summit cross on this trip. And we were still hopeful that the weather would somehow clear by the time we reached the summit. Optimal conditions for going to the top. The higher we climbed, the wetter it seemed to get, and the mist refused to clear. There's a little bit of feeling of disappointment. We've uh, headed back to the Fugio Avro because it started to rain a bit heavier. Vision is very bad. And that Giafrata was just a bit slippy. And we just thought, you know, what's what's the, the risk of entering the top to see the cross in the absolute grey skies or turn back and get some chips from the, the Refugio. So it was an easy decision and one of safety. We had some schnitzel, and as we left the refugio, we could see the clouds were beginning to clear. 
We toyed with the idea of giving it a second go, but ultimately decided against it. The rain had been stopped starting all day after all, and we were still feeling a little defeated. We opted to take the chairlifts back down, and seeing the mountains break through the clouds was pretty cool. Oh, oh lift up. Once we got back, we opted for Japanese food and finished the night with a few beers to compensate for the bad weather. Fingers crossed that we would finally get some sunshine. So much sunshine and we were delighted. We devoured breakfast and hurried ourselves to get ready. With the weather on our side, at least for now, we felt optimistic that today would finally be the day we reached our first summit cross. We hopped in the trusty blue Kia and made our way straight to Paso Jiao. Well, that's just arrived um, at the Paso Jiao. That's not it behind us, but it looks pretty cool. We're actually going, I need to take these off, can't see anything. I think somewhere around these guys, um, but we'll find out as we get a little bit closer, I suppose. Well, little update on Paso Jiao or Monte Cernera. Something like that, Monte Sonera, can't remember exactly what it's called. Um, again, another terrible pronunciation and memory of the routes that we're actually doing. The route begins 20 minutes drive away from Cortina at the Hotel Paso Jiao. Monte Sonera has two peaks and we opted to go for the taller of the two. The views are absolutely incredible and the trail, although quite short at 5.6 kilometers, has three Via Ferrata sections enough to be rated hard by the All Trails app. Had to lighten the load, it was getting a bit warm. It just seems so crazy when you're all the way down. I mean, look how small the guys are getting, but there's actually people up here when my finger things. Look, here they come on the way down. So, <laughs> yeah, bit of a bit of a way to go. It's uh, all up from here. Excuse my breathing. <laughs> my boots are new and grippy, so this is fine. <laughs> Piece of cake. <laughs> and just a short distance beyond the first section, we encountered the second Via Ferrata, which was even more exciting than the first. That's the boys all up. Hopefully I got some cool action shots of them on the drone. Uh, looked pretty uh, gnarly. We made it safe and sound. Now, uh, just the rest of the way. <laughs> the sun is directly above us, so it's 
absolutely baking hot. Oh. Sweaty boy. <laughs> We actually thought that the uh, Via Ferrata route was over, but after that one that we just did down there, but where these guys are, it's another sort of Via Ferrata kind of up there. So I guess we're going going straight up. And we thought we were going a bit round, but turns out that's a different uh, different route. I see. <laughs> yeah. It's a fresh rope, so it's a I was thinking when I was doing it, like, oh, probably better without the rope. Oh. Once we pass that Via Ferrata, it's just like a dusty path, which is fine. Bit steep. I don't know how long that's taken. I don't know how far we've come. It's been exhausting. But it's so close. It's so close. Passo Jao. Done and dusted. Oh wow. Oh wow. We've made it. That was tough. That was really tough. But they're there. Well done, boys. They've done it. And with that, our time in the Dolomites had come to an end. There it is, just over in the distance. That's that's us done. Monte Paso Jao, Monte Cernera Sima Nord. It was really fun. Um, the, the sort of Via Frata se sections were just really exciting. Look at that though. After five days in the mountains, through bad planning, bad weather, and a lot of dolomite inexperience, we had reached a cross at the top of the mountain. We achieved the goal we'd set ourselves. Now, we've all done tougher walks. Heck, we spent the last day of our holiday walking around Venice for eight hours a little hungover. That was tough. But that feeling of wanting something and going out there and actually doing it, however big or small the goal may be, it's euphoric. We had set out to bag a peak in the Dolomites, in a place that until now felt like somewhere you only see on Instagram and dream about going. And I got to share that experience in the company of great friends. Honestly, that's a buzz that's hard to beat. Wiggle them. <laughs> Wiggle them and I'm gonna put piano music over this. <laughs> and this trip, it was never really about reaching summits or making videos. It was about just having a good time. All the moments the camera never got to see. <laughs> moments shared with friends who finally found the conviction to do something we'd all really wanted to do for a while and not let our jobs or time or life get in the way. I guess my final words on this are, stop waiting. Go out and do the things that you really want to do. Go hiking make a film, or just spend time with friends. Do the things you want to do and never, no matter how stupid they seem, never, ever stop. And 
cup. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs>